The Aegis-class destroyer USS Laboon recently conducted an effectiveness test of 5-inch 54 HECVT ammunition against land targets at Vieques Island, Puerto Rico. This is a quick look at the test results. The test had two objectives, to dynamically test the effectiveness of the ammunition against land targets given accurate gunfire, and to establish the long-range effectiveness potential of current 5-inch 54 gun weapon systems against land targets. The test was sponsored by the Conventional Ammunition Program Office, Crane, Indiana, coordinated by the 5-inch 54 Gun Weapon System Interaction Working Group and conducted by the Dahlgren Division of the Naval Surface Warfare Center. This was the first known live fire test of ammunition effectiveness ever conducted by the Navy. Since the prime objective was to assess the effectiveness of the ammunition itself, several steps were taken to ensure accurate gunfire. To minimize mean point of impact errors, test conductors eliminated target location errors by using surveyed coordinates, reduced meteorological errors with up-to-the-minute observations, minimized navigation errors through use of the global positioning system, and used the Army's registration and transfer technique to help move the fall of shot from a registration point to the target. To minimize round-to-round -round dispersion, test conductors used ammunition which exhibits the lowest ballistic dispersion, minimized initial velocity variations by using ammunition from the same propelling charge lock, and eliminated aim point variations due to reference point tracking by using GPS navigation. Finally, test planners assured maximum coverage by aligning the target's long axis with the line of fire. This is known as infilade fire. In other words, conditions were set to assure the most accurate gunfire possible, and thus the maximum number of target hits. In other words, a current gunfire system as good as it can get. Three targets were used, a military dump truck, a military fire truck, and a previously damaged school bus. They were spaced about 30 yards apart in a line as if going down a road. A plywood dummy represented the driver of each truck, and 12 additional dummies were placed in prone positions about the vehicles. Because of prior damage, no dummies were put in the school bus. Firing range was 18,000 yards, which is longer than normal training range, but more closely reflects expected combat conditions and gives projectiles an improved angle of fall to enhance lethality. 33 fire-for-effect rounds were fired. Fragments from at least seven rounds hit the target. Analysis is ongoing, but early results show that both trucks received considerable damage, and total mobility kills can be declared since controlled movement of the vehicles would have ceased within minutes of being hit, and repair in the field would have been difficult or impossible. Although the bus was heavily damaged and considered killed, a detailed damage assessment will not be made because of the vehicle's prior damaged condition. The dump truck driver was killed. The diesel fuel tanks were punctured top and bottom, and the steering linkage severed. One front tire, three of four rear tires, and the spare tire were punctured and flat. There were holes in the intake manifold. Both front tires of the fire truck were punctured and flat. The master brake line was severed front and rear, and there were multiple holes in the four-inch metal water line used for firefighting. The firefighting control panel was severely damaged and seven of 14 dummies were killed and one was injured. In addition, at least 28 of 33 fire for effect rounds would have been scored as hits against a 200 meter by 200 meter area target. A thorough analysis of the test is underway, but preliminary results show that given accurate gunfire, 5-inch 54 HECVT ammunition is very effective against land targets at combat ranges. The test also reinforced the value of 5-inch 54 gun weapon systems when sound gunnery preparations are observed, and it established a vision of how effective these systems can be with near-term improvements. 
The results also demonstrate the feasibility of this test design for future evaluations of ammunition lethality.